Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Sunday evening to you all. It is the evening of March the 24th. And I just want to come on here and give you guys some update information on an increasing severe weather threat for your Monday, March the 25th. That is tomorrow to kickstart your work week. What we'll do first is we'll go over the information from the Storm Prediction Center. They issued a, a new update uh, a couple hours ago uh, that did increase uh, the severe weather threat across areas of the western deep south, including Louisiana, Mississippi, and areas of Arkansas. We'll talk about how there now is an increased tornado risk and damaging wind risk across areas of the south. Then we'll go over the HRRR model, which is a, a short range model guidance that will kind of give us an idea of the timing, the evolution of these storms. And then we'll talk about the ingredients driving uh, this uh, severe weather threat, which I think is also important. Just kind of give you guys as the audience kind of a, a better understanding of why we're going to have a severe weather threat for tomorrow. So let's get rocking and rolling. So what you're looking at here is the outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, the experts. And uh, they have issued an enhanced risk in this orange. If you're not familiar with these outlooks, the dark green is a marginal risk. The yellow is a slight risk, level two out of five. The orange is an enhanced risk, which is a level three out of five. Once, In my opinion, once you start to get to an enhanced risk, that means you really do have a, a pretty significant risk of severe weather. Once you start to get to a moderate risk and a high risk, moderate being in, will show up in a red, level four out of five, high which show up in pink, level five out of five, that's when you can have an outbreak, a really big outbreak of severe weather. We're not sure if we're going to get that tomorrow, but we do have a pretty significant severe weather threat for tomorrow. So enhanced risk, which does include uh, kind of the central sections of Mississippi and western sections of Mississippi, especially southwestern sections of the state, northeastern areas of Louisiana, and then just eastern areas of Louisiana in general, and then a very small corner, the far extreme southeastern corner of Arkansas. We have a slight risk that does extend um, all the way back to eastern Texas, all the way into western sections of Alabama, all the way up into central sections of Arkansas, almost all the way up to Memphis. Okay, so what is this driven off of? Well, in this yellow area, that is a 10% risk of tornadoes within 25 miles in a given location. This does include Jackson. It almost includes, if not if it, it looks like it does include pretty much like Monroe, Louisiana, and then just this section of Louisiana right here, and then pretty much all of southwestern Mississippi. Yellow area means a 10% risk of tornadoes within 25 miles in a given location. The brown area, that's a 5% risk of tornadoes within 25 miles in a given location. What makes this a little bit more significant, quite literally, is that you see these black dashes going in between this yellow area. That means not only do you have that 10% risk of tornadoes, you also have a hatch risk, which means you have a 10% risk of significant tornadoes, which is considered an EF2 or higher. So this is a big deal. We could have some strong tornadoes tomorrow in this area. And then we have that enhanced risk because of an increased damaging wind threat, which in the red you see here, that means you have a 30% chance of seeing winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour within 25 miles in any given location. Like I said, in this red area. In the yellow, that is a 15% risk of the same criteria. The hell threat, I don't think will be super significant tomorrow. Just a 5% risk of hell, pretty much in this entire area right into here. But I don't think that'll be a big threat tomorrow. So let's go over the H triple R model. All right. I'm it's probably gonna be leaving you guys in like extreme eastern Texas hanging a little bit. I do apologize. I do think most of your weather will come before midday tomorrow. But I don't think the worst of the weather will be there. I think once we get into southern Arkansas and all of Louisiana and pretty much all of western Mississippi, I think this is where the worst of the weather is going to be. So we'll go on and just push this all the way to about 11 a.m. tomorrow, uh, central time. We got some storms starting to get close to Little Rock. Uh, they're starting to pretty much move across the entire state of Arkansas. Shreveport right in here. These storms start to knock on your doorstep around lunchtime tomorrow. But if you'll notice, the orange and reds right in here begin to deepen. You'll start to see more reds. That's basically because this entire area right in here, the atmosphere is really becoming unstable because we're getting deeper into the day, into the afternoon. It's warming up, and you got a low, lot of low-level moisture that's building into this area. A lot of ingredients, and we'll talk more on that here in a second. So this line of storms, as you're seeing here, is likely going to intensify. I don't think tomorrow's setup is one of those setups where you're going to have like these discrete supercells. Um, unfortunately, I, I really think this is going to be one of those setups where you have tornadoes kind of embedded and more so a line of storms, which a lot of times these things are rain wrapped. You can't really see them that well. And I mean, that's typically the kind of threat we see in the deep south. But this is around 2 p.m. tomorrow, right? 
you know, the worst of the weather is moving right through the middle of Louisiana, nasty storms moving through southern Arkansas, and then they start to lose some intensity once they get in the central and northern Arkansas, where basically you guys are displaced from the main ingredients for severe weather. We take it all the way to about 4 p.m. These storms are knocking on the doorstep of the Mississippi River at this point. They're starting to make their way through northeastern Louisiana. Still got some storms down here. If you notice, kind of down here in southern Louisiana, around the Lake Charles area, we got these little hooks right in here. That tells me that the HRRR model is trying to depict some rotation with these storms. And I think there'll be a lot of rotation with these storms with a, basically an enhanced low-level jet that's really building along this area. We'll talk more on that here in a second. If you are like, Mitch, what are you talking about a low-level jet? But these storms will continue to move. This is around 6 p.m. Storms are starting to knock on the doorstep of Jackson. Some weather is starting to move into Memphis. I just don't think it'll be too bad up in Memphis. I think you guys are a little bit too far north, kind of like northern Arkansas. Uh, but it'll be an ongoing tornado risk across western and southwestern Mississippi at this point. The weather starts to move out of Louisiana, at least like this per this portion of Louisiana right in here, still moving through um, southeastern Louisiana, starting to... Uh, move into the Baton Rouge area. These storms are moving through the heart of Mississippi at this point. And by the time we start to get into about 11 p.m. midnight, storms are moving through Baton Rouge, New Orleans, but they could be quite intense around the Meridian area, Hattiesburg, nasty storms moving in. And I think as they start to move into Alabama, they'll start to lose some steam. A couple reasons why is because they become displaced from the main ingredients. You start to lose the low-level moisture that's needed for severe weather. And then just the timing of the day. Okay, this is the wee hours of the morning. I would say more so the timing of the night. So by the time we get into the middle of the night, the, the severe weather threat really significantly drops off. So... We take a look at what was something we call the significant tornado parameter, guys. So the higher the number you see on your screen means the higher the ingredients for severe weather. Now, just because you see a four down here, right? This is around 2 p.m. tomorrow. Just because you see a four down here in like southern Louisiana, right around right around Lake Charles, that doesn't mean there's a four out of 10 chance of them be there being a tornado. Just think of this as the higher the numbers you see on this, the, the, the better the ingredients for tornadoes, okay? So you notice this really begins to spike tomorrow afternoon, evening. It's, it's the latest long-range HRRR model really likes southern Louisiana and extreme southwestern uh, Mississippi. I mean, it's even, I would say, it brings the highest tornado threat well south of Jackson just about. And then we start to move kind of deeper into the night, tomorrow night. And, uh, you know, it starts to lower. Okay, but this is kind of a very skinny sector. But remember, you know, they have a 10% risk of a tornado way up here too. But, you know, I could see this getting dragged a little bit further south. But we'll see. The, uh, the, the significant tornado parameter doesn't always tell the story. Okay, just like this. The updraft felicity swath doesn't always, always tell the story either. But if you notice right in here... The latest long-range HRRR model, which is the only model right now that takes us out to tomorrow. We also have the NAM2, which I don't have pulled up. But it really likes these things to get spinning here in central Mississippi, even getting into the Tuscaloosa area. But it really likes this area. Now, if we take a look at the, at the NAM, the NAM more so favors what the Storm Prediction Center is saying. Right into here, extreme southeastern Arkansas. Um, kind of north of the Jackson area. And if you're like, Mitch, what am I looking at? Just the more you see the colors, the greens, yellows, uh, that is what this particular run, in this case of the NAM, is trying to show where a rotating storm will be. Just because a storm is rotating, that don't mean it's going to drop a tornado. Okay? So watch out for tomorrow. Now, you know, we speak on the ingredients, which this is typically the part of the video that, that bores people, and I get it. Um, but two things that, you look at when you're trying to figure out severe weather, something called kinematics and thermodynamics. Kinematics is the favorable winds aloft that drive a severe weather threat, kind of the lifting mechanism and kind of the turning with height. You got directional shear, speed shear, and then you got thermodynamics, which is your how high are your dew points? How high is the humidity, basically? How high is the surface temperatures? What about your cape values, your lapse rates? And then you figure out where is the best overlapping of those ingredients. And that's typically where your worst severe weather threat is going to be, your highest severe weather threat is going to be. So one thing you look at here, this is a thermodynamic. These are dew points. It's around midday tomorrow. Almost the entire state of Louisiana has dew points in the 60s. But look as this continues to move deeper into the afternoon. 
dew points spike well into the low to mid 60s. And if you're thinking, well, what is considered a favorable dew point for severe weather? Once you get into the 60s, you certainly get more favorable. You can get it in the 50s also, but 60s and higher, that's definitely the threshold, th more so the threshold in the level there. Dew points are, are even into the 70s down here in certain sections of southern Louisiana. So you got what we call a moist or warm sector basically moving in and then collapsing as dry air moves in. In response to higher dew points, you typically get higher CAPE levels. So where is the highest CAPE levels? Well, the latest long range HRRR model really likes southern Louisiana as we're getting into tomorrow afternoon. It spikes here in southwestern Mississippi too. And in this case, you don't really need CAPE levels any more than five to six, seven hundred joules per kilogram. Um, once you get over a thousand, then you pretty much got a lot of fuel to work with in this case because you have a pretty high end kinematic wind field that's moving through this area also. So you got this pretty, I would say, small corridor of CAPE levels over 500 to over a thousand joules per kilogram working its way through this area. I think the K, I think the HRR model is actually underdoing this. I think that this energy could extend a little bit further north. So next thing we'll look at is the low level jet in this region. Okay, it's going to be getting jacked up in here, getting high. I mean, you got a 60 to 70 knot low level jet. Winds are moving at interstate speed about a mile above your heads here in northern Louisiana. All right, and it's starting to increase in Mississippi. So you got a lot of wind fuel, if you will, to work with these storms. Stouts flow right out the south. And yeah, you definitely are going to have um, a favorable wind field aloft uh, to basically support the thermodynamics that are there. So you look at something called uh, a sounding. All right. If you look at this, this is an extreme. This is a sounding I pulled up out of uh, extreme southwestern Mississippi. You got cape levels that, you know, only over 100. I mean, I'm sorry, over like 800 joules per kilogram, not too significant, but you don't need all that. You really don't. The surface temperature 70, that'll work. Dew points, upper 60s, that'll definitely work. You got, you know, it shows tornado right in here. And if you notice here, you see how this hodograph does a loop. That tells us we call what we call a looping hodograph, which means uh, we definitely do have some turning with height. And if you look right here, winds are coming right out the south, and you see how the wind barbs right here begin to turn and move out the southwest. So nothing too crazy with height, no huge change in direction and a very short amount of real estate aloft um, with height, but certainly turning with height up there for sure. So that's all I got, guys. Stay safe out there, please. Um, uh, you know, we just dealt with that nasty tornado a year ago today in the Rolling Fork, Mississippi area. It was literally, it's literally the one year anniversary today, and you guys are going to have to deal with severe weather in that area tomorrow too. So uh, just stay weather aware. Take the weather serious. Don't wait until it's serious to take it serious. It, you know, it might cost you a life. So God bless all y'all and uh, stay safe out there.